secret that dogs are man's best friend? For Paul, who suffered with a debilitating condition that caused him paralysis and dystonia attacks, his dog Koira is more than his best friend. She's a lifesaver. Have a look. Koira and I are best friends, and she's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Well, she saved his life at least 50 times. The first time I had an attack, I was terrified. I thought I was dying. It kind of feels like you're stuck in wet cement. It was, what the hell's going on with me? He's like, something's wrong and fully half of his body just went completely paralyzed. He could drop absolutely anywhere and we were stuck there until it resolved. Paul is diagnosed with hypermobility, Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, and hypokalemic periodic paralysis. When I've had bad attacks, I've fallen down a flight of stairs before. A lot of things would be way too dangerous for me to even think about doing it without having an alert system. I thought that would be great to have somebody to tell us in advance and that somebody was Koira. As long as there's a scent change, a dog can alert you to what that change is. We trained Koira with cotton balls with Paul saliva on it. He would have to chew on cotton balls until we got one right before his attack. And we used that for the scent alert. Right now she gives me a 30 minute alert. It's enough for me to lie down. When Koira alerts Paul to an attack, this gives him time to get someplace safe. I have peace of mind knowing that is gonna take care of Paul and he can make himself safe because of her alerts. Living with all these things, some of it can sap the joy out of life a bit, but when you have like great things like like a fluffy little service dog that comes with you everywhere. It, it throws the joy back in life. It makes things better. It makes things a lot easier. And Paul's story, one of many highlighted in the new book called Dr. Dogs. The author, Maria Goodavage, joins us with Paul Koira and his mom, Vivian, all in our audience. And Welcome. I love hearing the story about how Koira has changed your family. I want to ask you as a mom, how has Koira changed your family the most? Oh my gosh, besides that huge peace of mind, um, me not having to drive Paul to college and then wait in the parking lot all day while he's attending his classes just in case he has an emergency. Um, so I can just drop him off and leave now and Koira is responsible for him. And Paul, how has this changed your confidence? Well, it means I can go to school by myself. Um, I can go out with friends. I can do normal human things. And it's really, really nice not to be wearing a bicycle helmet indoors at class. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's really humiliating kind of. So it's, it's a lot better to be independent and having a friend with you all the time. I mean, when you're looking at the story of Paul and you're sitting here watching this beautiful, wonderful dog be a lifesaver, one of many dogs, what makes a dog so adaptable, so smart, so intelligent that they're able to basically accomplish this task that no human ever could? Right. Well, these dogs have special training and they're finding out more and more it is by virtue of their incredible noses. Their olfactory system is amazing. They smell things we could never dream of smelling. So to be able to smell the subtle chemical change in Paul that we would never know what that is. Science doesn't have to know what it is because Koira knows what it is. And I see this across the board with all kinds of illnesses that dogs are detecting low blood sugars. They can even wake up from sleeping to tell their person that they're having low blood sugar while they're sleeping and prevent comas. There are all kinds of new uses, people with sleep disorders, seizure disorders. There was the first paper ever about dogs actually being able to smell the scent of pre-seizure this year. And people who have those dogs who alert them to seizures say, yeah, of course my dog knows that, but now it's been studied and proven. And so the dog's nose is so incredible in many laboratories around the world, they're going in and sniffing for cancer in, in, in research facilities, but they're all pet dogs who go in for the day, they have fun, their paycheck is um, a lot of love and praise and maybe a little treat or a toy, and they're finding that they can detect cancer in very early stages. Wow. The nose knows. Wow. 
I mean, are there certain breeds that the olfactory system is, is better developed than certain? No, it can be almost any breed. What they really look for is the desire for a treat. If they are food driven or oh, reward driven. Oh, cover her treat. So. <laughs> So my dog, for instance, would probably be great because he lives for treats. And so a dog has to be really reward driven. And it can be any breed of dog as long as they're into the work. But I want to highlight one thing that, that you said, Paul, and this may be the most understated element of this. You went from having to wear a helmet when you were at school, for instance, to having the coolest best friend in, yeah. Absolutely. in the building. Absolutely, like people come up and they want to introduce themselves and get to know me just because I have a dog. I mean, and then I make friends through that. It's it's a way to meet people that I would never have met otherwise. Good way to meet girls too. Oh, I, know. I, know. I, know. I know exactly what where you're heading, young but man. But you know what? I think you say it's the dog, and I'm sure people like your dog. But you seem really nice and fun, and just people just want to hang out with you. So it might not be all the dog. They just. <laughs> The yeah, trick is, come for the dog, stay for the person. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And more great stories like this. It's called Dr. Dogs. It's available wherever books are sold on October 1st. And everyone in the audience is going home with a copy. And before we go, I always like to ask, but we, we've all met. Can I come say hi to Cora? Absolutely. Okay. Totally. I, I have been hosting this entire segment. Watching Cora's face, thinking, "Can I just say hello?" <laughs> say Cora, we are so proud of the great work that you do. You're doing such a good job. Yeah, you're such a sweetheart. Thank you for what you do. Nice to meet you. Good luck you both, and good luck with the book. Thank you very much. When you look at that prompter and then just kind of give it a look, and then that means we'll be right back. Okay? Good job. We'll be right back.